Hey guys, today I'm talking about this coffee table. This is based on an inspiration piece that retails for about $1,300. Well, actually it retails for $2,000, but it's on sale for $1,300. But that doesn't matter because I built this for just a little over $100. And the only tools I used were a miter saw, a power drill, a crack jig, and a brad nailer. And by the way, there is no concrete involved. My friend Jen Woodhouse has the plans for this coffee table, and I will walk you through exactly how I built this. You can find a link to the plans, a more detailed article about building this coffee table, and a link to all the materials and sources in the description below. Now let's get started. I started out by building the two squares that make up the frame. They are built using 2x2s and pocket holes. The key here, like any project, is to make sure that they are both square. Now for the angled corner boards. They are a compound miter cut with a 10 degree bevel and miter. I cut one board the size and then used that to cut the rest of the boards to make sure that they were all equal sizes. To attach them, I used pocket holes. Now because of the compound miter cut, I found it easiest to use my Craig 320 to add the pocket holes, so I don't have to worry about their placement in my K4. Then I went ahead and attached them to the bottom frame using pocket hole screws. To attach to the top frame, I placed the entire thing upside down on the top frame and attached it. This makes the final skeleton of the frame. Now for the X's. The deal with this is that there is a 10 degree angle here and a 30 degree angle here. So I have already cut the 10 degree end and the five degree bevel here. Now I'm going to hold it up, align it, and mark the exact location where that needs to be cut. Once I made the cut, I used wood glue to attach the boards. Since it is a tight fit, once the glue dries, the joint is pretty strong. Now for the short pieces of the X, I cut them out and attached them using wood glue. To hold it in place while the glue dries, I added a couple of finished nails. The key here is a tight fit, so be sure to fit and cut as you go. And the base is ready. This is a good time to stain or paint the base. I will link to the stain I used in the description below. Now for the top. I wanted to give it a chunky feel, yet stay light. So I built a frame all around using 1x8 boards. They are just screwed into the base with countersunk screws. Then I added glue and added the top plywood and clamped and let it all dry overnight. The next day, I used my circular saw and cut off about an eighth of an inch on all sides to ensure the edges were perfectly straight and equal. So now at this point, if you wanted to, you could stain or paint your top. However, if you do that, I would highly recommend adding 1x2 trim all around so you can cover the edges. But because I am emulating my inspiration piece, I will be doing something different. I am going to use contact paper. 
The important thing when using contact paper is to make sure that the surface is clean. So I sanded it down, I wiped it with a damp rag and then used a vacuum on the entire surface for good measure. Then I just went ahead and applied the contact paper. I have a full video showing you how to do this, including how to make those corners linked in the description below. The contact paper was not wide enough, so there is a seam in the middle. But if you are careful about aligning it well, you won't be able to see it at all. And here is the beautiful coffee table. Once again, the link to the plants and other sources are in the description below. But before you go, you might also like this 2x4 x like bench, or you might like this project. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I have lots of fun projects coming your way soon.